Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Heather Majors. In today's video, we're going to go over an introduction to Microsoft Forms. I'll show you how to get started, and then I'll talk about some of my favorite features within the Forms application. When you first come to the Forms application, you will see your recent forms right up top. Below that, you will see My Groups, and here you will find all of the forms that are created within the groups that you belong to. You can click on all my forms to see ones that were created by you. Let's walk through creating our first form. Click on new forms or new quiz, whichever suits your scenario. I'm going to start a form where it says untitled form. Click in that field and type in a title. One of the recent features that was added is the ability to apply formatting in forms. Highlight the words you would like to format and the toolbar will pop up where you can bold or add color, etc. For example, I want to put my training ideas title in a yellow color and make it bold. From there, you can add a description to help people know why or how to use your form. We're going to start building our form by adding our first question. Click on Add New. And then you will see the option to add a choice, text, rating, or date style question. Click on the drop down to see more question types. Here you can add a ranking, like art, or file upload style question. You can also add sections to your form. Sections are particularly useful when you have longer forms. I am going to start by choosing a simple choice question. And now I have the field to add my question and then the options below for the answers. Forms will evaluate what you enter in the question field and it will sometimes suggest options for answers. I'm going to go ahead and select add all and accept these choices. I can add additional options if I like by clicking the Add Option button below. I also have the choice to allow multiple answers and make this a required question. If you click on the three dots, you have additional options such as shuffling options, drop down, or adding branching. Another question type that has been added to forms is the file upload question type. When you select this option, a new folder will be created in SharePoint. If it's a personal form, the folder will be created in OneDrive. Note that the responders names and files will automatically be recorded. In this example, I'm going to ask the people who submit training ideas to upload some details about their suggestion. When you use the file upload question, there are some limitations to be aware of. You can only have 10 files per question, and the single file size limit can be set to 10 megabytes, 100 megabytes, or 1 gigabyte per file. It's also important to note that when you use this question type, you can only have answers submitted from people within your organization. Another one of my favorite features is the ability to customize the form by adding a theme. The choices that you are offered in the theme pane are based on the title of the form. If you don't like any of the choices offered, you can go with some of the standard themes at the bottom. One of the tricks that I've learned is if you go into the title of the form and change it to something else, let's say registration for example, and then you go back to the theme pane, you will see that they have updated. And then I might find something that I like better. For example, this chalkboard background with the computer keyboard on it. Now that I've picked a theme that I like, I can go back to my form title and put it back to what it originally was. If you still don't find something you like or find something that meets your sense of branding or style, you can go to the customized theme section and upload an image. If I can, I typically pick a theme from the ones that are offered within forms because the graphics tend to scale better. I haven't quite figured out exactly the pixel ratio to make the customized images look good. 
I went in and quickly added some additional information to our form and renamed it back to training ideas so that you can get an idea of what a completed form might look like. Now we can go to the upper right hand side and click preview so that we can see what the form looks like to our responders. In this example, I added sections so the people responding to the form will see the first section and then when they hit next, they will see the second section. And I'm pretty happy with this form. So now it's time to go back and look at the share options and the settings. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see the teal share button. And from here, we can start deciding who can respond to our form. Notice that anyone can respond is grayed out. And remember, I said that's because the file upload question is part of this form. So only people in my organization can respond or specific people in my organization can respond. If I choose specific people, a box will appear allowing me to specify the names. I can send this form to people by copying a link from this window, and I can even use a shortened URL, which was recently added. I can create a QR code, an embed code, or I can send the form via email. And these choices will allow people to respond to our form. I also have a couple of options to share my form as a template with my coworkers. When I create a template, they will get a duplicate link and they can use my questions and layout as their own without impacting my own form. So for example, I work on one of many training teams within my organization. Instead of recreating the will, I can send them a link and they can use the same questions. I can also share to collaborate and invite my coworkers to work on the form with me. Now let's go up to the three dots for more form settings, select settings, and look at some additional options. First, we can see who can fill out this form. As you see, only people in my organization can respond and it's set to record the name. If I want this form to be anonymous, I will remove the check mark from this box. I can also choose whether or not people can respond more than one time. In the next box down, we have options for responses. The form will default to accept responses at all times, but you can narrow that down by selecting a start date and an end date. You can also choose to show a progress bar this is particularly helpful with longer forms. Another feature I like is the ability to customize a thank you message. I use this a lot with training registration forms so that people will know what to expect next once they have submitted their request to attend one of my classes. And then we have the response receipts. The first one is allow receipt of responses after submission. This will send an email to the person who submitted the form with the details of what they submitted. And then you can choose get email notifications for each response. This will send an email to the creator of the form, letting them know that somebody has filled out their form. I have noticed that the get email notifications for each response is a little inconsistent. You will get an email if it's a personal form, but if it's a group form, it really depends on how your admin has set up your tenant. For the purposes of this demonstration, this email is based off of a personal form. You can see that it sends it to me as the owner of the form and lets me know who responded and gives me a link to view the results. While this email is nice, it is a little bit limited on the information that you get, as well as who it will go to. You may consider using Power Automate to notify additional people or to send the information from the form to places like SharePoint or Excel. I have navigated back to the forms homepage so that you can see how to find the responses if you don't have the email. Click on the responses tab at the top and then you have the choice to view results and you can use the arrows to scroll through the responses. The other option you have is to view the responses in Excel. If you chose record name in the settings, you will see the email address and the name of the person who responded and then you will also see the answers to your form. If you chose the form to be anonymous, you will only see the answers to the form. 
And the last tip I have for you is how to move a form. I created this form in the My Form section. What if I wanted that form to be in my Learning Together group? When you create a personal form, you can move it one time. You will do this by hovering over the form card and selecting the three dots. And then I will select Move. On the right-hand side of the screen, you will see the Move Items window where I can select the group to move it to. And that's all I have for you guys today in this training video. I hope that you found this helpful. And if you did, please click the like button so that it will spread to more people and we can all learn together. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.